this time we're going to do another problem involving energy, work, and power. This, I don't think there's any power in this problem, but uh, let's read it and find out. Uh, we have a 10 kilogram block which is dropped from a height of 20 meters onto a spring with a spring constant of 2,500 newtons per meter. How much will the spring be compressed? Okay, let's uh, make a picture of that to get a feeling of what it looks like. So we have a block. Mass is equal to 10 kilograms. We drop it from a certain height onto a spring. Here's the spring. So the block will hit the spring and then the spring will be compressed a distance until the block rests, comes to rest momentarily at some distance like this, where x is equal to the amount that the spring has been compressed. Uh, when the block hits the spring, it will have fallen a distance of 20 meters. So this distance right here to the top of the spring, uh, that would be h equals 20 meters. And then notice that the, that the block will drop down an additional distance of x until the spring is compressed. And then you say to yourself, well, how do we solve a problem like this? And again, I always like to go to the equation where we write work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any heat lost in the process. Well, in this particular case, we're not putting any work into the system, so that can go to zero. And here, it doesn't look like we have any friction or anything we have to worry about, so there's no heat loss. Also notice that since we dropped the block from rest, there's no movement, therefore there's no kinetic energy, so that goes to zero. And at the very end, when the block comes to rest at the very bottom, it's again not moving, so there's no kinetic energy here, which means the whole equation simply comes down to whatever initial potential energy you had before you started equals the potential energy of the system after the problem is over. All right, now, since the initial potential energy is due to the height that the object has, we have to have some reference height. And I'm going to call the very final position of the block h equals zero. That is the, or I shouldn't call it h because we don't want to conf confuse it with that, but let's call it just big H. Big H equals zero. That's my reference position for my problem. So the block starts from a height of 20 meters, h, plus the distance x above that reference point. So we say then that the initial potential energy is mg h plus x, the two combined. So that's the total height from which the block is dropped relative to where it's finally going to end up at the very end of the problem. The potential energy final, that's the, all the energy that's stored in the spring when the spring is compressed, and for that we need the equation 1 half kx squared. That's the energy, the potential energy that the system has, and it's all stored in the compressed spring at the end of the problem. All right, what are we looking for? We're looking for x, so the unknown is right here and right there. So I have to solve this equation for x to find the answers to the problem. To do that, I have to multiply the left side, get rid of parentheses, so I can write mgh plus mgx equals one-half kx squared. Now notice that looks an awful lot like a quadratic equation. We have an x squared term, an x to the first term, and a constant with no x. That means I want to move everything over to one side and set it equal to zero. So I can say zero equals one-half kx squared minus mgx minus mgh. And then all I have to do here is plug in the numbers and solve this as a quadratic equation. Now, to make things cleaner and easier, I'm going to leave out the units, since, it's, since I'm going to have to solve a quadratic equation, realizing at the very end that x will be in meters when I solve the problem. So, 0 equals 1 half times k, which is 2,500, times x squared, minus the mass, which is 10, times g, which is 9.8, times x, which is what I'm looking for, minus 10 times 9.8 times, I believe it's 20, right? That's right. Height is 20. 20 right there. Okay. 
Simplifying that a little bit, I get 0 equals 1,250x squared minus 98x and minus, that would be 200 times that, that would be uh, 19600, I believe. Let's see, do I have enough zeros there? Um, hmm, maybe too many zeros. That would be 98, 9800, that would be 1960. One too many zeros. All right, there's my quadratic equation. Now I'm going to need a calculator to figure that out. Uh, but before we do that, let's put into a quadratic formula. So we have x is equal to minus b, which is 98, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 98 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a, which will be 2 times 1250. All right, if you don't remember what that equation looked like, let me show you. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And remember that this is your a, this is your b, and this is your c. So that's how you plug the numbers into the quadratic formula. Now we need your calculator to figure out what this is. So first we figure out what's underneath the radical. So we have 1960 times 1250 times 4. Add to that 98 squared. Take the square root of that. And this gives us x is equal to 98 plus or minus uh, 3,132 all divided by 2,500. Okay, now, two possible answers. Either we add the two numerator, the two quantities in the numerator together and divide by 2,500, or we subtract this from that. But of course, if we subtract this big number from 98, we get a negative number, gives us a negative answer, and we know that the spring was not compressed uh, in a negative way. So that means uh, the negative is not a solution. We're going to only ask, uh, solve the positive solution. And so we get uh, 3132 plus 98 divided by 2,500, and we get 1.29 meters. So this gives us the amount the spring was compressed from rest after the block hits the spring. And so we can say then that the total distance the block drops is the 20 meters plus the 1.29 meters before the spring comes to rest. And that's the answer to this problem. So it looked like a simple, easy problem, but it turns out we end up with something that we have to recognize is a quadratic equation, and then we need to use the quadratic formula to solve that equation. All right, there's a good example. Let me try to come up with some other good ones.